Welcome to An Evil Mind, a crime fiction vlog from Xenobooks. I'm Nick Malowick. Uh, this week, the long overdue episode for Elmore Leonard. Uh, Leonard, born 1925 in New Orleans, moved around a lot as a young kid. Eventually, the family settles in the Detroit metro area, which would be in 2013, where Leonard would die after complications uh, from a stroke. If you count short story collections and the pulp westerns that he started off with, in the 50s, you're looking at, I believe, 54 or 55 books over the course of Leonard's life. And we have this perception of him now as an extremely successful writer, but really, it's only in like the mid to late 80s that he, that he really starts to take off. And by that point, he'd been writing professionally for 30 years. And again, starting off in the Western pulps. Um, you know, I mean, he, he was always successful enough to get a new contract for a new book. A lot of these were, uh, you know, some of them were paperback originals, uh, you know, in the early days. And uh, he also made a lot of money doing, if not screenplays, and for example, Mr. Majestic uh, with, with Charles Bronson, that was the movie version. Actually, he wrote the screenplay for that, then the novel, which reportedly is how Alistair MacLean usually worked. Um, but he, so he did screenplays. He also sold a lot of movies, uh, you know, the, the, uh, 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 what's it? 310 to Yuma. That's Elmore Leonard. Uh, that was one of his novels he sold. Ombre with Paul Newman, uh, The Tall T with Randolph Scott. These are all based on, on his early books. I mean, he wrote like, you know, say five Westerns and then sold them all. But then also he wrote Joe Kidd, uh, Clint Eastwood movie, uh, as, as an original screenplay. And yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's B tier, uh, Eastwood Western, but uh, these are the sort of things that, that sustained himself. He got into the Hollywood stuff early. Um, his movie, The Big Bounce, I think, was first filmed uh, in the early 1970s. Mr. Majestic was 74, for example. Ombre, I believe, 67. Joe Kidd, 68. Um, so, you know, successful, a steady worker, a guy who was going to be published but not even close to a household name, really, until we start uh, in like the, in the mid to late 80s, like I said. Uh, Wikipedia has it that Glitz was his first big successful novel. Um, possibly. You know, it's Wikipedia, grain of salt. But after that, you know, I mean, he just takes off, and he'd already been on a run. I mean, there, there's, you know, at least a novel a year, sometimes two, novel a year, two novels a year. That continued really until 2012. I think the last thing he put out um, was his book of Raylan Given stories. And we, we'll talk about Raylan in, in a little bit of detail. Um, but I think that was 2012. He has the stroke in the summer of 2013 and unfortunately, like I said, died about two months later. Um the 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 word on the street about Leonard was always his dialogue. Um, he's cited as an inspiration by Quentin Tarantino, for example. Uh, he, he was an early person where his bad guys talked like normal people. His good guys talked like normal people. People would have inconsequential conversations in his book. They, they didn't really advance the plot, but they they felt. Uh, they help make people a little more real. Uh, George V. Higgins, who wrote The Friends of Eddie Coyle, uh, is, in a, is in a similar vein. I mean, you know, Eddie Coyle is almost entirely dialogue. It's something like 90%. Now, the difference between Coyle and Elmore Leonard is that Elmore Leonard could repeat this well. Um, my feelings on Coyle are that he did his dialogue trick to diminishing returns over time and it didn't i mean he he peaked right out of the gate with uh friends of eddie coyle which if he had never written anything else that alone is going to cement his place and you know someday maybe we'll do a round of, of boston writers and we'll, we'll talk about coyle i don't want to get too far off on that but this is the thing that uh, leonard did now, you talk a little bit about diminishing returns. I think after a while, um, Leonard's characters become a little less menacing um, and perhaps a little more comedic for their, uh, you know, their everyday distractions that they'll talk about. And this contributes in a certain, to a certain extent 
to his success in films. And, and certainly, again, like I said, he, he inspires Tarantino. I don't think Tarantino does it anywhere near as well as Leonard does. But um, you, know, you, you see it in that vein. Um, Leonard's work does become lighter over time. Once you get into the late 80s and on to the 90s and into the 21st century, he doesn't have the same uh, oomph to it. Uh, you know, what would have been grittier earlier is now relatively softened. He was never, he was never a soft, right? He never did anything that was like a cozy movie. He was always hard boiled, uh, you know, to, to a certain extent. And you know, there was always a, you know, serious menace to the characters, uh, to the bad guys, certainly. Um, but, uh, it was not the same, but we see this with, we see this with everybody. We see this as they get older. We saw, you know, we were talking about, Richard Stark and Don Westlake last week. It's the same sort of thing. It just happens as you get as you get older. Um, you know, you know. I think a, a lot of guys are not putting the same fire into the stories, and it's just a, it's just a consequence of aging. So you know, that's not a huge criticism, but it is something that, depending upon one's own particular tastes in crime fiction, you're going to want to. Uh, look out for him. This is not to in any way denigrate his later books. Like I always say, if I'm talking about somebody here, it's because I think their body of work is worth reading overall. Um, so, you know, like I always say, you can't go wrong. Pick a book off the shelf. He didn't actually do that many series characters, although he did try. He um, And I don't even know if this was intentional, because he never like sat down and ran through one, uh, you know, you would take a guy and run through a whole bunch of books with him. Actually, there are only, well, I'll take this back. There are, okay, we'll talk about Raylan. Um, so Raylan Givens from the show Justified, the FX show. Um, actually, very different character than the Raylan of the original two novels that he was in, Pronto and Riding the Rap, both of which were adapted into movies. Um, but not necessarily under those names. And... Um, you know, the book Raylan is older than uh, than TV Raylan. Uh, the book book Raylan is in his 50s. He's still a United States Marshal, still from Kentucky, still a former coal miner, but not quite as, as young and, and dashing as, as uh, you know, TV Raylan. Um, so that gets backed up a little bit. There's an attempt to retcon that somewhat with the book Raylan, which was uh, stories made from story ideas that he had had for the TV show, some of which were you, some of which you will recognize when you read them if you watched, you know, all five seasons of the show in in uh, altered form, and some that, that never made it to the show at all. And that book does de-age Raylan to try and match him up with the TV version a little bit better. The first episode of the show is an adaptation of the short story Fire in the Hole, uh, which I believe is in the collection when the ladies come out to dance. Uh, so, you know, they're similar. Um, TV Raylan is quicker with his gun than Book Raylan is. Although Book Raylan is not at all in any way reluctant to shoot people. Um, now, he probably has something of an antecedent in, uh, in, a, in a character named... Uh, uh, I believe God, I just spaced on the guy's name. Sorry, but the 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 main character in the book City Primeval, which was subtitled High Noon at Detroit, and then that character does appear again later in a Miami novel of Leonard's uh, called La Brava, um, which is a much more intense, hard-boiled, uh, straight suspense cop novel. It really wasn't a police procedural. But it was one of his earlier ones that, you know, it was kind of harder. Mr. Majestic, same sort of deal. Mr. Majestic, actually a very violent book. I've often suspected it had something of an effect on uh, Robert B. Parker's book, Wilderness. There's a superficial resemblance. And, I, you know, and Mr. Majestic came out first. So it could very well have been an inspiration for that. But a lot of Leonard's books inha inhabit a, a shared universe. Uh, Ernest Stickley, for example, is a main character in both the novel Swag, where he starts up as, as part of an armed robbery duo that sends him to prison. When he gets out of prison, it's the novel Stick, which was made into a movie with Burt Reynolds in the uh, mid-1980s. But uh, you start to see, you know, characters from, say, 
uh, Rum Punch, which was adapted as Jackie Brown, show up in different books. You know, that's why we had uh, both, you know, the, the character of uh, of an ATF agent, Ray Nicolette, shows up in both um, Jackie Brown and in Out of Sight, uh, which is one of the Karen Sisko movies. Karen Sisko, I think, had two different books and also a, a very good uh, but short-lived TV show with Carla Gugino in the title role. And because of rights issues, she shows up as essentially that character, but under a different name in Justified. Uh, so, you know, there's an enormous body of work here. Um, you know, Raylan is also an inspiration for a later character, uh, Carl... Dang, the one from the hot kid. Hold on, I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna look at my print out here. Uh, Carl Webster, who was sort of like a depression, Oklahoma version of Raylan, and um, these sort of bring him. These books are a little more in the earlier vein, in that Carl Webster, even more so than Raylan, doesn't mind shooting people. I mean, it's almost a point where he he he's almost indifferent, and you know and. 1920s, 1930s Oklahoma, nobody's going to use the word sociopath, and there's certainly nothing that we know as readers, at least in the character's background, that's going to make him into someone like that, but he does, uh, he does have some of those qualities, man. Carl Webster, again, more so than Raylan, just blasts people without a second thought. It's, it's almost mechanical for him. Um, the movies made from the books tend to be pretty good. Um, he's actually he's actually quite fortunate in his adaptations. I would say the two examples of where it didn't work out so great for me are, are both the adaptations of The Big Bounce. But The Big Bounce is also a, a certainly a lesser Elmore Leonard novel. Um, you know, mostly TV didn't work out for him. Uh, you know, the Maximum Bob show, uh, the Karen Sisko show. Nothing really clicked on TV until we get to uh, Justified. But the movies are pretty good. 52 Pickup with Roy Scheider and Ann Margaret. That's a good one. Um, let's see if there's like a whole list here of the adaptations. Eh. No. Nah, oh, no, there is one. So we're, I'm going to, as a very rough count, I'm going to say something like 15 movies. Eh, Cat Chase with Peter Weller. That's kind of a so-so one. Uh, Be Cool, the needless sequel to Get Short. Get Short is great, but Be, both Be Cool the book and Be Cool the movie, I think, are... Uh, the book is definitely a lesser book. Uh, movie, I cannot in good conscience recommend to anybody. Um, but you so, you know, you watch Get Shorty. The, the new Get Shorty show that's on Sundance, haven't seen it. Know absolutely nothing about it. Um, I've heard good things have no personal knowledge. Um, this is Leonard's probably a guy I should have mentioned earlier. Um, he didn't win as many awards as some people, although he did get an Edgar for, um, dang, book back in like 84. What the heck was it? He did win an award. Oh, man. I can't remember anything anymore. But So he got an Edgar for that, actually, which is, like I said, about 30 years into his career. Um... But he was never under-recognized. He was always, if nothing else, he was a writer's writer. He's one of, you know, one of your real hardcore pros of the post-World War II period. So, you know, he's not an early pulp guy. He's not a black mask, dime detective guy, like, say, Raymond Chandler. But he's, you know, a, a, a master of the craft who came up the hard way. And again, one of the World War II veterans who has some idea what he's talking about when it comes to uh, violence and danger and death. He was a CB in the South Pacific for the last two years of the war. And if he was anything like my paternal, if his experiences were like my paternal grandfather's, who was a uh, Army Corps of Engineers officer in the South Pacific, he spent a lot of his time being shot at. Um, so he was able to write from a place of authority and, uh, and personal knowledge that, uh, for example, you know, I cannot. And, but, you know, that, that a lot of other writers cannot. Although, you know, like I said, there's plenty of veterans. Dashiell Hammett was a World War I veteran. Raymond Chandler, Robert B. Parker, Korean War veteran. You know, that kind of thing. And, and there's some, you know, certainly guys who wrote some of the post-Pendleton uh, Mac Bolan books Many of them, many of the guys who wrote for Gold Eagle were Vietnam uh, combat veterans. So, 
Um, if I got to pick Elmore Leonard's to go with just to start off, you want to go back to the 70s some. Um, I've mentioned Mr. Majestic. I've mentioned uh, City Primeval. Um, Get Shorty's one of the good funny ones. Um, Swag and Stick are both uh, highly recommended. The Moonshine War is one that nobody really talks about. That's that's a good one. And that's, a, you know, I mean, exactly what it sounds like. Um, 1930, well, 1920s, Prohibition era, uh, you know, Southern Moonshine book, uh, quite violent. Eh? Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to ruin the ending, but the, the ending is a, a real mess. So, um, go out there, go to the library, go to the bookstore, Amazon. We're going to have sales links in the description. As usual, buy some Elmore, Elmore Leonard books. Your the, the likelihood of you being disappointed is extremely low. Um, so, Hope you like this. Um, hope you like those books when you get them. Subscribe to the channel. Sign up for notifications. Uh, follow Xena Books on social media. We will see you next week. And thank you very much for your time. All right. Bye.